good morning students today we are going to start class 7th sst geography chapter number 13 temperate grassland now a student in this topic we'll read about the temperate grassland basically the grasslands which are situated at the temperate zone that we have to read in this topic so what is temperate zone you know very well the zones which comes in between the tropic of cancer to circle of arctic uh, and tropic of capricorn to circle of antarctic so these two zones comes under it and we have to read particularly the temperate grassland about so first of all we have to read about the prairie grassland and another one is the veld so let us begin with the topic of temperate grassland which comes under the tropic of cancer and between the arctic circle let us begin with the topic that is the prairie now student prairie as you can see in the picture in the map that is given the prairie the dark colored yellow part is shown as a prairie so this is the area which refer as a grassland and this grassland is a name given as a prairie why the name has given the prairie because the prairie is a french word which means meadow or grassland so that prairie exactly the word it is converted into that uh, english we can convert so it becomes grassland so that is why this area is known as the grass area which is uh, covered with the grass or the Uh, the natural vegetation of this area is a grass that is why this area is known as grassland the prairies of north america are located between the foot hills of the rocky mountains in the west so if we'll see the western part of the uh, prairie that lies the rocky mountain so basically the foot hills of the down the 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 downmost part of the rocky mountain is is lie the uh prairie from the west side and great lakes the different lakes there are different lakes in the uh, north america so there are the different lakes so the great lakes and appalachian highland in the east so from west it is the and uh, rockies mountain and from the east it is surrounded by appalachian mount uh, highland and the great lakes they are dotted with the extensive and undulating plain and land reaches height up to about 900 meter in the west along slope of the rocky mountain and slope gently towards the east so if we'll go from the west to east so from going towards west to east the highland uh, the height is become started decreasing means the foothills of the rocky mountain from there and we when we reach to the eastern part of the southern america or the prairies that area is decreasing the the height is getting decrease a number of lakes and river flow through the prairies such as uh, so there are several rivers several lakes that flow uh, towards the prairies areas like lake winnipeg lake manitoba and uh, saskatchewan atta athabasaka red missouri mississippi so there are several rivers means there are several water bodies as you can see where the water body is present so what kind of uh, the climate as well as the irrigation facilities and the requirement of the water can be fulfilled through these through these water sources so these water sources provide the water uh, for the irrigation purpose and these water bodies pr provide the several uh, like area which is get drained by these rivers or the water bodies those areas were become earlier it was in the form of grassland you will uh, read gradually that the earlier it was in the form of grassland but nowadays it has converted into the uh, into the agricultural land and 
these rivers and these water bodies help them a lot now the temperate grassland covered the province of alberta so the area which comes under the prairie that is the alberta saskatchewan manitoba in canada and the state of uh, montana that is the uh, it is it is one of the also part of the uh, prairie and one more that is that is north and south dakota wyoming minnesota that is in usa so these are separated by usa and canada some parts some regions come under the canada like alberta saskatchewan manitoba that comes under the alberta or that comes under the canada and north and south dakota wyoming uh, wyoming and minnesota these comes under the usa so these are the regions which comes under the prairie today however the original prairie grassland have been cleared to make way for the cultivation of wheat and corn for the per commercial purposes and pastoral farming so you know very well the prairies the grassland which were earlier uh, they were on they were useless but nowadays these grasslands are converted into the agricultural land and the people those who are living or those who are residing over there they had started cultivating several crops the in main crops they are growing wheat and corn they are growing wheat and corn as well as they used to pasture the they used to keep the cattle and and various other farming animals that they can get the product from there the soil of this region is rich rich black and very fertile so uh, why the grasses is grown much, much over here the soil is very black and it is very fertile it is uh, uh, similar to charonism found in steppes grassland of russia which is well suited for cultivation so if we compare with the steppes grassland where the same same quality of soil is found which is very fertile and that fertile soil is helping for the cultivation purpose so we know very well we need the water to irrigate we need the fertile soil to uh, grow any crop so if we get all these things like the lakes and rivers what we had read uh, in the previous uh, topic that the several lake lakes are there several rivers are there and the plus point is that here is black soil plus it is very fertile so all this complete uh, things makes that particular area for suitable for the cultivation so the people have started they what they did they cut down the grasses they utilize uh, or they converted all the grasslands into the farmland basically now <clears throat> so the grasses over here the the area which is comes under the in these zones let us see what kind of climate what kind of climate they face what is uh, being in a temperate zone what they face so due to the presence of rocky mountain to the west their location is in the heart of the north america so if we if we uh, take a clue of a rocky mountain so this prairie lies in the heart of the north america means it is the mid part of the north america the prairie have a continental temperate type of climate means the climate of prairie is what it is a continental temperate type of climate with extreme temperature here temperatures are very extreme like summers are very uh, summers are warm and humid it's around 30 degrees celsius as well as winters are extremely cold bringing the temperature below the freezing point it's about uh, like if we count as average temperature it's about 20 degrees celsius plus during the summer season and winter during it's about minus 20 degree celsius sometimes so this is the continental type of climate means the extreme temperature is also same and the maximum temperature is also same so this kind of climatic condition is found over the 
prairie region rainfall decreases from the east to west so when we move from east going towards the west the rainfall decreases also from south to north means from moving towards the south and we coming to the north the rainfall also decreases the average rainfall is about 50 cm so the rainfall is very less as you can see but the water sources like river and lakes are there so they get the water always the prairies lies in the rain shadow area of the rocky mountains and also because of the distance from the sea okay now there is two reason the first reason is that the because of the less rain the reason is that first it is the rain shadow of the rocky mountain what is the meaning of rain shadow the rain shadow means the opposite side of the mountain which does not get them maximum amount of rainfall or we can say no amount of rainfall so the prairies lies at the rain shadow of the rocky mountain from the uh, from the west so this is the reason and it is very far from the sea also so the water is very less the rainfall is very less over here most of the rainfall is received during the spring and summer so whatever the rainfall is occur over here so it is generally in the season of the summer and the spring and when it rains in the winter so it definitely it will be snowfall because we have already seen the temperature the average temperature of winter is also minus 20 degrees celsius here one more thing you have to understand the warm chinook chinook wind this is a warm wind that blow from the eastern slope of the rockies in the wind uh, in the late winter and early spring help to melt the snow okay during the uh, late winter means when the winter is going to over starting of the summer so chinook wind chinook wind chinook is a warm wind which is started blowing from the rockies eastern uh, slope of the rockies and this makes the area or the snow which is covered by covered during the winter season that snows are getting melt during time during that time okay so this is the climate which we found in the prairie region now moving towards the natural vegetation as you have seen the climatic condition is very uh, uh, typical over here like summers are very uh, it's about uh, 30 degree or 20 degree celsius average temperature and the winter is very also harsh so this leads to the give to the birth to the different kind of natural vegetation like the region is dominated uh, uh, by the grass of various kind like so uh, desert xerophyte uh, and uh, several plants which is which needs the less amount of water to grow because there is very less rainfall due to the uh, due to the rain shadow area of the rocky mountain as well as distance from the sea towards the eastern side the grass is taller and turn into coarse and short towards the west so what is the reason the reason is only that from to the eastern side of the prairie the different lakes and water bodies are there so in the eastern side the grasses are taller but when we move toward the western side the short the grasses become short so from western side it is short and the, but in the eastern side it is it is taller the reason is that the water body present over there the grass however withers and dies during the autumn and in winter the grassland is bare covered with snow so during the winter season the whole grassland is bare totally uh, covered with the snow there is no grass at all in during the winter season but uh, uh, as i told you the warm chinook wind blows over there so what it do it melt the snow of the prairies and that gives the chance to grow up the grasses which is um, which is already present in the soil but that was that is covered with the that is co uh, covered by the snow which is uh, which is in the form of snowfall fell into the prairies region on the slope of mountains and along the water courses trees such as willows poplar alder so there are some trees which is also grow in the 
स्लोप्स ऑफ माउंटेन ऑफ रॉकीज एज वेल एज द वाटर बॉडीज विच आर फाउंड इन दी दो रीजन सो सम ऑफ द ट्रीज आर फाउंड लाइक विलोज पॉपुलर एल्डर्स सो दे आर ग्रो इन दोज रीजन नाउ मूविंग टू वर्ड द वाइल्ड लाइफ सो हेयर द नेचुरल वेजिटेशन इज वेरी टिपिकल एंड क्लाइमेट इज वेरी टिपिकल सो वाइल्ड लाइफ इज ऑल्सो वेरी लिमिटेड लाइक हेयर वी कैन सी द रैबिट्स कायोट्स एंड और द प्रेयरी वोल्स एंड प्रेयरी डॉग्स एंटीलोप एंड बर्ड्स लाइक ईगल हॉक्स आउल सम मोर एनिमल्स लाइक गोट शिप and cattle as well so these animals are found in these regions so the people use them um, for their daily needs for their livelihood also so they used to sell their skin uh, their meat and all so that they can survive now let us see what kind of uh, people live over here what they do how they earn and how they survive so this area earlier it was in the form of grassland as i told you but nowadays the prairie which were in the form of grassland earlier that has converted into the the uh, cultivation land or we can say farm land now what this what kind of impact is there on the uh, people those who are living in these areas The nomadic or the prairie Indians were the original inhabitant of these temperate grassland. So basically, these the people those who are nomadic over there. So they were known as prairie Indians. They are the original inhabitant of these grass grassland, the temperate grassland basically, and their primary occupation uh, was like hunting, food gathering. So hunting means the killing the animals, and food gathering means. Uh, to take the fruits to dug dig out the tubers and the other uh, things which is grow uh, which is inside the soil so they used to do the hunting and gathering at during that time the region was one of the most sparsely populated area of the world so why it is sparsely the reason is that there is no uh, there is all only a grass at all there is not there is no tree and all so people avoid to leave uh, these areas but time changes and this times led to the opening of railway line as well as several european started coming in the prairie or the regions of the prairie to they started settling down over there and they change the landscape they change the prairie fully they started plowing the land they planted the different crops like cereals and all and those who went towards the west took up the cattle rearing means in the eastern side where the water bodies water sources are lies there they had grown the crop but when they moved toward the eastern areas where does not water sources is not appropriate so these area those area they have converted into the grasslands where they can <coughs> rear their cattle so their cattle can grow and graze over there as railways and roadways spread across the plain more and more town came up and demand the food for the, uh, for food this gives the chance to the growth of agriculture as well as cattle rearing so the people those who are living in those areas they got the opportunities to fulfill the need of the food as well as the demand of the meat and the cattle products <clears throat> so these areas become world most important wheat and corn growing agricultural lands so how it is possible at all the reason is that the introduction of the different type of farming like they started uh the different kind of irrigation facilities they started doing the multi cropping multi cropping means they can grow a single they can grow a multiple crop at a single time in a single field mix farming growing uh crops as well as taking care of the cattle as well as crop rotation one year they had grown something else another year they can they grow something else so this keeps 
this keeps the soil they uh, this keeps this maintain the soil the fertility of the soil and people used to produce more and more so that they can earn more now due to this area is very vast and big people have started extensive agriculture commercial agriculture so what is extensive commercial agriculture means in those agriculture production uh, system where the production is done for the commercial purpose means they grow not only to survive for themselves they also grow for the uh, for to sell them they can the excess amount of what they grow so they can sell so it's it's just opposite to the intensive agriculture where they can grow if surplus is there so they can sell but here in extensive they grow on purposely that they can sell it to the market so the land land area which they had start they had converted into the uh, farmland those area those areas are fully mechanized fully mechanized means they had started doing their all tasks by using the machines like tractors wagons harrows seed drills combine harvesters they all are used by the machines and from sowing to threshing means from uh, sowing the seeds to the threshing to separating the grain from the uh, plant of the uh, wheat and corn so all means everything is done by the machine so the reason is that the reason is that the lands are so big that the, it is not possible by human being to do the all those work and people have enough money to purchase the those machines so that they can utilize for their production <clears throat> the best method of irrigation and they also use the best uh, best way to water the plant crops are equipped with the all uh, modern facilities and silos silos is a tall steel storage structure to store the grain so here in india it is very biggest problem that people used to grow uh, any crops okay but the problem is that the storage where they where they can store their grains so that the grain does not affect so here in uh, in the prairies region they had made a different silos so silos are made to keep their food grains whatever they grow whatever the crops they grow so these crops can be preserved into the silos different silos these these all are made of the stool steel and these are not easily uh, these are not <clears throat> easily rotted or we can say these keep the safe uh, the cereals they keep the cereals safe basically and being the uh, vast production of the uh, wheat and corn so the prairies always been refer as a granaries of the world the reason is that here the maximum the extensive commercial agriculture is done mixed farming is also practiced so as i told you mixed farming is what it is where the agriculture is also doing agriculture work is also doing and the cattle or the sheep rearing is also doing so they used to do both things so that they can earn here huge ranches ranches is also there ranches means where the grasses is available so that the the cattle they can rear they can graze over there like uh, they also keep shed shed means where the animals keep, uh, are kept pastures where the animals can eat and cowboys cowboys are there so cow cowboys are there to help the to help to keep those animals help to keep those and to look after those animals basically uh farm product is also like if they have the grassland if they have the sap, uh, different animals so definitely they get the animal product like milk butter cheese also meat also so they used to keep all those things and used to sell those product not only in their town nearby towns also means they sell it to the other part of the areas as well as 
during the summer time they used to eat they used to graze this natural pasture but during the winter time when the uh, minus 20 degree celsius is their temperature is there so they used to keep the dried hay so that hay is a type of grasses which is found in the prairie so these hays are used for the feed, for feeding to the feeding the animals which are living into the prairies region <clears throat> So when the development took place, so most of the ranches, the grasslands, are located close to the major roads and the railway line. Here, transcontinental roadways and railways connect the millions of people to the prairies. Now, prairies which were earlier not accessible to the all people by all people, but when the railways and roadways are made, now everybody is able to assess the these prairies area and as well as the water bodies which is present over there they provide the inland waterways as and the air service is also provide the airport is also there the animal which they keep with them like uh, they used to take their products like beef of the cattle farm products ship so these are driven in the winds to big cities where their meat is packed thereafter it is sold to the towns and cities nearby and also exported so what they keep animals they can use their product like milk and cheese and other butter and many more things they also use their meats so they keep keep uh, contact with the roadways and railways so that they can sell their products not only in the uh, north america they can also sell it to the other continent as well the availability of variety of minerals and power resources like coal and iron has also led to the development of many heavy and consumer goods industries so here some um, little amount of minerals and coal and iron is also found so these also provide the uh, job opportunities for the people those who are living in the prairie area so that they can earn and they can um, uh, they these uh, these minerals provide uh, these minerals established the several factories and those factories also provide the livelihood or the earning sources of the people those who are living in the prairies area now the topic is over uh, the next topic will read about the well that is in the south africa the next temperate grassland but you have to also understand that the grassland which is which, which what we had read it is the prairie so prairie had a separate climatic condition which grows the uh, that the specific um, specific quality of natural vegetation and this keeps the specific kind of wildlife as well the people those who are living in those area they are dependent upon the agriculture as well as they grow a several several type of crops included the maximum or the we can say the maximum crop which is grown in these areas that is the wheat and corn and being produced uh, uh, the maximum number of wheat and corn the prairies is also known as granaries of the world they also used to do the mixed farming and multi cropping and crop rotation so that they can maintain the soil fertility as well as they grow max they produce the maximum amount of food grains they all they used to do the mix farming what is mix farming where they can practice the farming as well as they also practice the cattle and sheep rearing so all these they provide these cattle provide the milk butter cheese and many more products they also uh, supplied the beef or we can say the meat product to the people those who are uh those who need it or they those who are eat it so this is the topic that we have to uh, uh, read in this video now your homework is that you have to write about the climatic condition of the temperate grassland that is the prairie grassland thank you students